Hello, everyone. We're going to continue reading from Futuring, The Exploration of the Future by Edward Cornish. We're on Chapter 3 and Part 2, and here we go. Will the super trends reverse? We have been thinking of the super trends as ongoing currents of change that flow in the same direction and cause massive change in many aspects of our lives. However, we must recognize that a trend, even a super trend, is likely to change course or speed and often unexpectedly. We can imagine the circumstances that would cause technological progress, for example, to slow drastically or even reverse so that it becomes technological regress. An all-out nuclear war <clears throat> might have such a result and cause widespread technological decline. Some scholars have we're seeing increase, increasing environmental problems that could disrupt technological progress. At least two of the super trends, environmental decline and deculturalization, are, the prob are properly regarded as the most people as problems. However, for the purpose of understanding the great transformation and where it is taking us, it is good to first defer thinking in terms of problems and how to solve them. Instead, we need to keep it sharply focused on trying to understand and what is happening and where it is likely to lead us into the future. The world by 2040, what might it, like, what might it be like? By projecting our super trends forward in time, we can create a new scenario or picture of what the world might be like at a specific point in time in the future, say in the year 2040. This scenario assumes that the super trends will continue much as they are now and that there will be no big surprises to validate our expectations. It can be described as a continuation scenario. We must definitely not think of our scenario as forecast, but rather as simply one way to think about what may happen in the future. In fact, we ourselves may want to take every effort to prevent certain aspects of the scenario from ever coming to pass. The special virtue of scenarios is that they can get us psychologically into the future so we can begin to think more realistically and freely about what life might be like for us in the 2040 and what we might do to make it better. We can begin our scenario by assuming that by 2040, the world stock of scientific and technological knowledge will be far larger than today. There are already many millions of scientists, technologists, and scholars working on innovative ideas and... There are likely to be more in the years ahead. Furthermore, there will be increasing assistance from computers, telecommunications, and networks. We might guess that we will have twice as much knowledge by 2040 as in 2000, but making a precise estimate would depend heavily on alternative assumptions and about how we measure such knowledge. What value might we place on Charles Darwin's theory of evolution or Nicholas Copernicus' idea that the Earth revolved around the sun instead of vice versa? Most of today's familiar technologies will have made enormous advances and progress it will be most impressive in newer fields such as genetic engineering and nanotechnology. Genetic engineering will have established its usefulness and the world will be enjoying much better health as a result. In 2040, plants will grow bigger, mature quicker, need less fertilization, and resist insects and diseases. Consumers will be able to buy better food at a very lower cost. They were willing to settle for quality no better than the found on the beginning of the century. Public fears about genetic foods will be forgotten as normally happens when a new technology has had a chance to show that it isn't really as dangerous as people first feared. New materials will have made possible innumerable new products that are greatly superior to those back in 2000. The products we meet consumers' wishes and goods that are no longer lasting, lighter, stronger, sharper, or cheaper. New materials will give architects the ability to design the amazing structures that would have been impossible a generation earlier. Computers, cellular telephones, and a world wide web will have enabled people around the world to collaborate more closely and efficiently than ever before. This long distance cooperation will allow expertise to flow easily and cheaply to places where it is needed. Surgeons will be routinely operated on patients thousands of miles away. Faster computers, better portable telephones, more sophisticated networks, and other electronic advances will be able to boost human productivity, both on and off the job, but many people will prefer to use them for entertainment rather than work. Higher, higher liver... St ah. Higher living standards. Humans will be better off economically 2040 than they have ever been in history. Wealth will have increased due to rapidly improving technology and increases in efficiencies, in efficiencies achieved through the globalization of production and distribution and other factors. The problems of progress. Take a little side note. In general, what we call progress can lead to the abuse of the natural environment, the burden of the learning of new jobs, and the general disorientation due to the change itself. Examples of other negative consequences of progress. Better machines means displaced workers and loss of status. Growing wealth means increase in rich and poor disparity, fewer workers for less desired tasks. New products means difficulty in making choices. More and better food, obesity and clogged arteries. Better health care means rising costs and higher expectations. Longer lives means the cost of supporting the elderly and increasing in disability stress on natural resources. Saving newborn, more birth defects, better transportation, decline of local communities, more TV programs, inactivity and desocialization, increasing comfort, boredom and apathy, portable telephones, forced exposure to noxious chatter, easy bill paying, Credit card fraud, identity theft, quick information, internet hoaxes, scams, and viruses, cheap, easy messaging, junk email, insensitive comments. 
Hundreds of millions of people whose parents were dirt poor peasants will live in homes that are like mansions compared to those places inhabited by their parents and grandparents. An extraordinary number of people will be super rich, multi-billionaires in today's dollars. There will still be many millions of poor people in 2040, but the real destitution, the lack of even the bare essentials of life, should be much rarer than it is now. On the other hand, the relative poverty, feeling poor because you know someone else who has more than you do, may be just as prevalent in 2040 as it is today, or maybe even more so. In the 1960s, psychologist Abraham Manasel claimed that as people's material wants were satisfied, they would naturally turn to non-material or spiritual goals. But economist Richard Ernstil, Ernstlein's, I'll read say his name, investigation revealed that steady improvements in the economy not may, may not ah, have not been accompanied by a decline in interest in material goods. Despite the general level of affluence never before realized in the history of the world, Ernstine writes, material concerns in the wealthiest nations today are as pressing as ever, and the pursuit of material needs are as intensive. The evidence suggests... The evidence suggests that there is no evolution toward higher or, or, or dealer go, uh, order goals. Rather, each step upward on the ladder of economic development merely stimulates new economic desires that lead to chase ever onward. While it would be pleasant to envision a world free from the pressures of material want, a more realistic projection based on the evidence is a world in which the generation after generation thinks it needs only other, another 10 or 20% more income to be perfectly happy. The perception of needing more money, ever, even as one's income... Uh, rises has been worldwide. People whose living standards are rising often become less happy if they are the people doing it better or seem to be. We can blame this on television, which flaunts the lifestyles of the rich and famous in the homes of the humblest people. A Chinese-American journalist, Sunan Lu Han, reports that her father's family icked out a meager existence on a rural child commune in the 1970s, but being isolated from the rest of the world, they believed living in their greatest country on earth. Now the same relatives are living there in spotless, heated homes, thanks to an economic boom, she reported, yet they bemoan their privations. What has changed? The appearance of the television sets with endless images of other people who have it better. In short, the people of 2040 will likely be on average richer than the people today, but they, not being, they may not be happier. Work and education. Due to rapid technological change, globalization, and other factors, workers will need to change jobs with an increase in frequency to stay employed in 2040. There may be fewer jobs that assure lifetime employment. Most workers will have to reinvent their careers and keep up with a fast-changing workplace. To cope with the complexities of the job market and find positions suited to the talents and interests, Workers will have more dependent than ever on career counselors, coaches, and mentors. Even when not actively searching for employment, more workers will probably maintain contact with employment agencies. Many ordinary workers will have agents to represent their interest in securing and negotiating a new position. To meet changing job requirements, workers will be forced to constantly update their education and skills. Education will no longer be viewed as an activity for young people, but as a continuing necessity throughout life. The world of 2040 may even have laws requiring adults to continue their education so they can remain economically productive and play a concern. Uh, constructive role in civic affairs. Already, welfare recipients in the United States may be required to attend training courses as conditioned on receiving payments, and judges may make a convict's early release from jail contingent on his learning to read. A more crowded world. Life expectancy will have risen due to the improved drugs and medical devices. New information about the preserving health through better nutrition and other factors. There may be millions of centurions in the developing nations, and a tiny but growing minority of people will be over 120 years old. By 2040, scientists will be likely have found ways to slow or reverse the aging process, since science, and people should already be benefiting. Babies born in 2040 may live for centuries. Longevity has a serious downside, however, because people develop increasing disabilities as they age. On the other hand, much more sophisticated medical treatments and prosthetic devices will be available to assist the, the, the disabled. Researchers will likely have found effective ways not only to prevent, but often to cure blindness, deafness, muscular deterioration, and other fragilities of age. Frailties of age. This means that more people will be able to do work and to support themselves for years or even decades beyond the typical retirement age of 65. By 2040, government will have updated their social security systems to remove the inefficiency, the incentives, nah, the incentives for people to retire as early as they do in life as they do now. Due to the increased longevity as well as a continued high rate of births, the United the world's population will be both larger and older in 2040 than it is in 2000. UN projections suggests that the population that year may be about 8 billion, compared with the 6 billion in 2000. Certain third world countries will have sprawling mega cities teeming with 30 or 40 million people, largely migrants from rural areas. Feeding and housing this huge population will strain the environment as well as the ability of the governments to cope with the runaway human needs. A devastated environment. Due to the demands of the soaring population and economic economy ravaged through ravages, ah, ravaged for resources, the environment by the year 2040 will be in a desperate condition 
Commission. The strenuous efforts of environmentalists to preserve the world's forest and wildlife will keep the oceans free of human garbage will have slow, slowed, but will not have halted the damage. The world's forest will have shrunk uh, substantially, and thousands of more species of animals and plants will have become extinct. Freshwater supplies will be disastrously short, though much of the world pumps in most of these areas will have run dry as water tables dropped. Water will be the most costly all around the world, making food more expensive and making agriculture as we know it economically impossible in many more areas. Globally, the oceans will be more polluted and the air more poisonous than they are today. Aware of the impacts of a deteriorated global environment, the on the health of well-off people will pay to have their personal air and water purified. New buildings and apartment houses will have systems for cleaning the air supply to tenants. Much of the concern about air pollution will focus on allergies and lung damage due to house dust and other contaminants. An expanded human habitat. By 2040, humans will have pushed out the frontiers of human settlement in every direction. The moon may have its first year-round inhabitants and the first lunatarian will have been born. On Earth, underground construction will have made major advances due to the need to develop more habitable space for human activities in urban areas. Building down may be viewed as more desirable than building up, partially because skyscrapers are viewed as more vulnerable to attacks by terrorists. Advancing technology will have solved many of the problems of living and working in unfriendly environments, such as outer space, Antarctica, under the oceans, or in polar regions. Antarctica will have thousands of residents, and newlyweds may see it as a cool place for a June honeymoon. Similarly, the Himalayan mountains may have become highly developed thanks to their wondrous scenery. Mount Everest may be dotted with luxury hotels as well as honky-tonk amusements for visitors bored with the scenery. People living on the new frontiers of the human habitat will be able to work for employers around the world because they will have all the equipment needed to communicate easily with anyone anywhere. The oceans will have become far more developed than they are now, and the development will be particularly apparent along coasts. Ocean farming may have become a serious rival to land farming, and a considerable portion of the oceans will become, in effect, marine farmland. Using techniques analogous with the land farmers, ocean farmers will increase the production of selected marine plant life and animals by means of fertilizers, defenses against predators, and selective breeding. Politically, economically, socially, and culturally, the world's nations in 2040 will be linked together more tightly than ever before. Spreading telecommunications and transportation systems will have intensified the globalization of the economy and the global inter international culture will have emerged due to the increasing contact of peoples with each other. The global elite will lead the way as they travel to pick up foods, clothing, styles, drinks, games, sports, and customs from other countries. A network of super highways will link will tightly link Asia, Europe, and Africa. Residents of Shanghai, Calcutta, and Bangkok will be able to drive comfortably and rapidly across the Eurasian landmass to Edinburgh, Paris, and Madrid. Prime tourist destinations such as Venice will have instituted extraordinary measures to protect their unique artworks and monuments from the hordes of visitors. Despite the fast trains and better highways, most travelers will still prefer to fly to more distant destinations. Space planes may reduce the Tokyo to New York flight time to a couple of hours. On arrival by plane, travelers may board a high-speed train to complete their journey journeys. Shaping our future. Our scenario is empathetically not a forecast for the actual world of 2040, but it rather waits to determine where we may be by a future date if we keep on going the way we are going now. Many other scenarios could be prepared for the basis of different assumptions. We might decide, for instance, that population will not grow as large as projected because certain identical factors such as AIDS or new birth rate control method, or that the world economy will have declined by 2040 due to environmental devastation and political incompetence. But whether we decide about where we are headed, we humans do not have to accept the fate passively. We can act to create a different future for ourselves, to avert specific problems, and to create new benefits that are not now on the horizon. Scenarios help us to understand our options for the future. Trends are not forces of destiny, and they can do change, and they may do so in response to deliberate human action to alter them. We are not, for example, forced to accept environmental decline, though we may have to make some hard choices if we want to stop it. Summary. In the previous chapter, we defined the identified the great transformation as the process in which the human future is being created. We considered it a model that can help us to explain what is happening in the Great Transformation and perhaps anticipate future changes. In this chapter, we identified six super trends that can be used as tools for anticipating future changes. We then attempted to project these great trends forward to try to anticipate what the world will be like in 2040 if the super trends continue. Our next task will be to look more carefully at how our world is changing in some ways, but not in others. As we shall see, continuity, uh, continuities of the world are not at least as important as the changes.